Hey guys, you are most welcome again on my YouTube channel and we are going to talk about Anglo-Norman poetry today. As you all know that I am doing a history of English literature series for 60 days and uh, um, some of you requested me to uh, type these notes. So let me tell you that I already planned that on my uh, on my blog and you will get this link in comment box. So click that link, go to my blog and uh, don't forget to subscribe the blog means uh, join the blog okay so there you will find uh, you know a place where you can put your email and you can subscribe because after 10 days or 15 days after this training i will be typing my notes there too so go there and uh, subscribe the blog now let's start today's topic uh, anglo norman poetry the poetry of this period was varied and uh, we can divide this into three to four parts so first part is chronicle okay we will be talking about chronicles of that time second is uh, religious and didactic poetry if you don't know the word didactic what it means didactic means giving uh, you know a lesson agar aapko koi ek poem aap padhte hain usse aapko moral koi lesson milta hai that poetry will be didactic poetry and third one is the romance so, so we will be talking about these three topics today uh, let's go ahead let's start normans were the people who brought uh, historical taste in english uh, english literature or in england and uh, there was it was a time when uh, storytelling grew out of latin okay so still we should keep in mind that uh, latin was the language okay at that time and uh, it was the time of great charter an an unusual number of verse chronicle is found during this period so so many chronicles you will find that uh, time stories which seems incredible are used in them uh, so they were using incredible stories at that point of time in that so first important is layman's brute okay so layman was a man and he was parish priest a parish priest in worcestershire completed brute about uh, so the name of the work is brute all right and it was written by layman's so it is layman's brute uh, brute about uh, 1205 it contains about uh, so in this work you will find 30000 lines and um, the story is of uh, the landing of brutus to the death of uh, cadwallader the last of the native kings it also includes innumerable episode especially the story of king lear you will find and arthur so king lear do you remember from shakespeare its main source is with brutus aglater a uh, versified romance and uh, the second was geoffrey of monmouth's historia regum britannia or jo ye sabse important uh, cheez hai it is remarkable for your uh, the use of similes okay uh, like we were uh, you know summarizing the works and uh, the characteristics here so you, you should remember similes the brilliant handling of alliterative words there they used a lot so Lemon was uh, important as Cadman was doing in early English poetry. Lemon is is to English poetry after the conquest. All right, Norman conquest. Now let's come to the second one. Robert Manning of Brun. He completed this rhymed story, rhymed story of England in thirteen thirty eight. Okay, and uh, the third one is Robert Gloucester. His rhyming chronicle was largely drawn on the work of Geoffrey of Monmouth and other chronicles. His work is full of ardent feeling of nationalism. So this word is again uh, important. Nationalism, similes, alliterative words, meters and uh, chronicles. So we should keep these things in mind while talking about the history of English literature so that we can collect these uh, keywords and later we can discuss with ourselves. Religious and didactic poetry, the next one. For religious and didactic poetry, Normandy, this place was important. And uh, William the Conqueror, let me remove it. William the Conqueror and uh, during his son's reign. So there, lots of people came with him and they, they were founders of abbeys and which became centers of learning, charity and civilization. The following works of religious and didactic poetry deserve mention. 
so first work is the ormolum and it was written about 1200 the ormolum marks the rise of english religious uh, literature and its religion is simple and rustic the second important work let's uh, talk about this a little the owl and the nightingale this is important all right so let's talk about its authorship is unknown anonymous person has written it composed it it was written in the early part of the 13th century it is a dialogue between the nightingale which represents the lighter joys of life and the owl which stands for wisdom and sobriety it has been uh, appreciated for uh, narrative skill characterization and sense of form so this is this work the owl and the nightingale it is one of the earliest work which is uh, you know appreciated by even today's uh, historians literary historians it uh, discards alliteration and adopts french end rhyme so remember this one this is the important fact about this work it discards alliteration okay most of anglo norman or uh, section poetry was alliterative but they adopt uh, the writer adopt french end rhymes here next one is the karsamundi it was composed by an anonymous again uh, because most of uh, the writers were unknown at that time Next one is Richard Roll of Hampole Next is miscellaneous poems and here let's talk about the D section Richard Roll of Hampole He was born in Yorkshire about 1300 He is supposed to have written his uh, prick of conscience It is a long poem based on the writings of early fathers it describes a simple and clear style the joys and sorrows of man's life and uh, he is affected in turn by good and evil so you can make your notes like uh, you can choose uh, two three lines and then you can learn them let's talk about a little more the alliterative english poems as we know that uh, there are some examples from uh, this period next into uh, next important work is sir gawain and uh, the grey knight pearl uh, okay this is uh, here is a line you can uh, read it it is remarkable for its super handling of plot its realism and its description of nature and its use of the alliterative long lines okay it is full of new inventiveness and originality the romances the french romance was made english in england Stafford A. Brook writes, The country was therefore swarming with tales, chiefly French and its poetic imagination with the fancies, the fables, the love and ornament of French romance. So French romance uh, came into English romance, okay, and uh, translated and imitated in English and written in the meter of friends and in rhyme. These romances, which are found in great numbers, are both alliterative and rhyming in meters. They may, they may be classified as follows according to the subject. So now here are some uh, types of romances were written there. They, as we know that uh, the subject matter or for writing romance was King Arthur, Geoffrey of Monmouth, began in uh, it in England about 1132. Some of the main romances connected with the Arthur legend are Arthur and Marlin, Morty the Arthur, Sir Gawain and the Green Knights, and Sir Tristram. So remember these names because uh, later you will see them in discussion. The second romantic story was that of Shaul Magan. Shaul Magan and uh, his 12 peers. Begin in France with the song of Roland, a huge tale of Charles Magan was forced about 1110 in the name of the Archbishop of Turpin. The popular romances of Charles Magan theme were Ottenel, the Roland, the Charles Magan and Ronald, Siege of Melon, Sir Farambras and the humorous Rolf Croyles. The third romance story is that the life of Alexander, King Alexander and the destruction of Troy belong to this category. Next is here. Various romances deal with miscellaneous themes, King Horn, Havelock, the Dane, Guy, Warwick and Belvis. So uh, for this heading, 
if we want to talk about the romances uh, we should keep in mind the name which were used in the works like uh, morte diosa okay sir gawain and uh, sir gawain and the green knight arthur arthur king arthur was uh, you know the greatest uh, uh we can say theme for writing romances at that time others were here we can uh, take this okay so uh, charles megan and his 12 peers so i hope you enjoyed the lesson or you have made your notes now so that's all for the day bye bye take care see you in next video tomorrow